seven to rules to play by. Today, I'm going to explain the rules to Seven Wonders, a card drafting, civilization building game by Antoine Bauza. The aim of the game is to win. The way you win is by having the most points and the most impressive civilization at the end of the game. To start, each player needs their own civilization. Either have them choose their own, or have them choose a card at random from this deck. Then, give each player the wonder board that corresponds to the civilization that they've chosen. You'll notice that the wonder boards are two-sided. For your first few games, I recommend you start with side A. It's more basic, and will give you more time to grasp the rest of the rules. Then, give each player three coins. Now, you have to set up the decks. Each deck corresponds to an age in the game, as indicated by the Roman numeral on the back of the cards. For each deck, you need to add the cards that have a number on the bottom equal to or less than the number of players in your game. For example, if you have five players in your game, you need to include the cards with the number 3, 4, and 5 on the bottom. That's all you need to do for decks 1 and 2. For age 3, you need to locate the guild cards. The guild cards are purple on both sides. Without looking, you need to choose the guild cards that you're going to add to the deck. How many? The number of players in your game plus two. So if you have five players in your game, you're going to take seven guild cards and add them to your deck. Then shuffle each deck and you're ready to play. Before we get into gameplay, let's talk about the cards. There are seven different kinds of cards. Brown cards, which are raw materials. There are four kinds of raw materials. Stone, wood, clay, and ore. There are also gray cards. Gray cards are finished products. There are three different kinds of finished products. Glass, cloth, and paper. The brown and the gray cards are what you'll be using to satisfy the building costs for your other cards. Next are gold cards. Gold cards are commerce. They'll either give you coins, a financial advantage when trading with your neighbor, or they'll give you resources of your own. Next are blue cards. Blue cards are civic. The only purpose that these cards serve is to give you points at the end of the game. How many points? The number in the laurel wreath. Then there's red cards. Red cards are military cards. They give you military strength based on the number of swords and shields on the top of the card. Next are green cards. Green cards are science. Science cards give you points at the end of the game, but the way they're scored is a little complicated, so we'll get into that in a minute. Right now, all you need to know is that there are three symbols for science. A tablet, a gear, and a compass. Finally, there are purple cards. Purple cards are guilds. Generally speaking, guilds will give you points based on what kind of cards your neighbors have. Here's how you play. At the start of each age, deal out seven cards from that age to each player. Each age will be played out in six turns. On your turn, choose one of the cards from your hand to play. Then pass the other cards to your neighbor. In age one, you're going to pass to your left. In age two, pass to your right. In age three, pass to your left again. If you get confused, don't worry. Just look at the symbol in the bottom corner on each card. Once everyone has chosen their card, they simultaneously declare what they're going to do with it. You can do one of three things. You can play it, you can build your wonder with it, or you can sell it. Choosing to play the card means putting it face up in front of you. In order to play the card, you must be able to pay the cost. The cost is located in the upper left-hand corner of each card. For example, the scriptorium has a building cost of one paper. If the cost is a coin, you pay that coin to the bank. If you're paying in resources, you don't need to discard anything. You just need to be able to show that you have access to those resources. If you don't have access to that resource yourself, you can buy it from your neighbor. That is, the player on your left, or the player on your right. Each resource you need costs two coins, and you pay those coins to the player you're buying it from. Your neighbor can never refuse to sell you a resource. Now, when you're buying a resource, you don't actually buy the card from them. You're just paying them to be able to use that resource. And buying a resource from a neighbor doesn't tie up the resource for the turn. That is, they can still use it to build their own buildings. Some cards have the name of a building in the upper left-hand corner next to the resource cost. If you've built that building in a previous age, you can play this card for free. This is called chaining. If a card will allow you to chain in the next age, it will list the buildings it allows you to chain into in the lower right-hand corner of that card. If you're building your wonder, take your card and put it face down under your wonder board. 
you must build your wonder in order, starting from the left and working your way to the right. The cost for building your wonder is printed on your wonder board. If you're selling the card, discard it face down and take three coins from the bank. After everyone has resolved their turn, take the cards passed to you from your neighbor and repeat the process again. This continues until you have only two cards left in your hand. Choose the card you want to play like normal, but instead of passing the unchosen card, discard it. You do not get any coins for discarding this card. At the end of the age, compare your military strength with your neighbors, the player on your left and the player on your right. The player who has the higher military strength takes a victory token. In age 1, take a victory token with a 1 on it. In age 2, a victory token with a 3. And in age 3, a victory token with a 5. If you have a lower military strength than your neighbor, take a defeat token. Each defeat token is worth negative 1 points. If you tied with your neighbor, neither of you takes anything. If that was the end of age 1 or 2, go on to the next age. Deal out 7 cards from that age and continue playing. If that was the end of age 3, that's the end of the game. Now you're going to tally up your score and find out who won. Let's talk about scoring. There are seven categories you can get points in for seven wonders. Military. Total up your points for military victories and defeats, and that number is your military score. Wealth. For every three coins you have at the end of the game, you get one point. Wonder. If you've built any stage of your wonder that gives you victory points, you score those points. Civic buildings. Total the points from your blue cards. Commerce. Total the points from your yellow cards. Guilds. Total the points from your purple cards. Now science is complicated, as it tends to be. For every complete set of three symbols, you score seven points. Then, for each type of symbol, count how many you have and square that number. So if you have three tablets, three squared is nine. Your tablets give you nine points. Add all of your science totals together, and that is your final science score. The player with the highest score wins. If there's a tie, then the player with the most coins wins. If there's still a tie, all players share a victory. And that's it for Seven Wonders. I hope you enjoyed this session of Rules to Play By. If you have any comments about Seven Wonders, or if you have a game suggestion that you'd like me to explain the rules for, please leave a comment below. And please subscribe for more rules for more games. Thanks, see you next time.